Today, we're going to learn my dad's recipe for shrimp and snow pea stir fry, and how you can use this approach to cook easy, healthy 15 minute stir fry recipes that your family will devour. Shrimp and snow pea stir fry features a velvety, savory sauce and perfectly contrasts the crunchiness of snow peas with the satisfying chew of shrimp. You can easily apply this technique to mix and match with your favorites, like chicken and broccoli, scallops and carrots, or whatever you have on hand. First, my dad will show us how to prepare shrimp like a Chinese chef. Well, in the US, shrimp are sold by the amount in a pound. Our shrimp today is 31.35, which means there are 31 to 35 shrimp in a pound, which is considered medium to large. If you prefer a smaller shrimp, you would get those with bigger numbers. Also, if you want to skip the peeling and deveining step, you can buy already peeled and deveined shrimp from most grocery stores. Is it better to leave the shrimp tails on? Oh. 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 And does it matter if the shrimp is frozen? This is not a 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 what we're doing here is slicing the shrimp from head to tail along its back, similar to butterflying a shrimp, but not as deep. It'll help the larger shrimp to cook slightly quicker, and also not curl as much when it cooks, which sometimes leads to a more rubbery texture. The advantage of doing this is you can also devein the shrimp in the same step. With the smaller shrimp, you don't need to do this. <laughs> At this point, we'll use a kitchen towel to remove any veins left on the shrimp. In Cantonese, shrimp is ha, which is a homophone of the word ha, which is the way to write laughter in Cantonese. Because of this, eating shrimp, especially during Chinese New Year, is considered good luck because it symbolizes laughter and happiness in your life for the upcoming year. For this recipe, you can use any kind of shrimp or prawn, but as with many types of seafood, especially hugely popular ones like shrimp, finding ones that are sustainably farmed or caught is often a confusing and complex undertaking. As consumers, one way to do our part is by voting with our wallets. Monterey Bay Aquarium in California runs a free website called Seafood Watch, which has a ton of recommendations on how to choose and purchase seafood in ways that have the least environmental impact. Now we'll marinate the shrimp. We'll add a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. Then we'll mix the seasonings in well. We'll mix in about a tablespoon of cornstarch here. With the shrimp prepared, we'll move on to the other star of this recipe, the snow peas, which my dad grew himself. Fresh snow peas from the garden? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I never, never have that kind of good taste snow pea in my life. Mm -hmm. This is the first time. These are delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the first time. This is the first time. This is the first time. This Formula asks this question, wow. how do you pick good snow peas? Definitely, the snow pea we have, it is all good. She hadn't waited. She was like, <laughs> I know this question. <laughs> Mom was holding five snow peas <laughs> Oh! Right now we have almost five pounds. Uh, five pounds? Yeah, five pounds snow peas. Wow. So only in the refrigerator. Oh, you yeah, got yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're in the market, right, you cannot pick piece by piece, mm. but you look at the whole thing. You look for the pea is tiny. You still see the pea, but it's not bold. Yeah. Then that is a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. My dad actually calls snow peas lan dou in Cantonese, short for ho lan dou, or literally Holland peas, because it's said that the Dutch introduced them to Taiwan and modern day Indonesia in the 17th century. Even though they're actually native to the Mediterranean region, the name stuck, and as snow peas spread around and grew in popularity, they became a staple in Chinese cuisine, being used in stir fries like ours today, as well as more elaborate dishes like the all vegetarian Buddha's delight. In that recipe, my dad used sugar snap peas instead of snow peas, which aren't the same but can often be used interchangeably if you're having trouble finding snow peas. <laughs> 
We'll clean the peas in some water and let it soak for five to 10 minutes. Right. With our peas prepared, we'll start on our other veggies. We'll cut four ounces of celery in half or into thirds lengthwise. Then turn them 90 degrees and cut into roughly one inch long pieces. We'll cut the carrot at an angle into half inch pieces. Then lay those flat and cut into eighth inch thick slices. We'll cut the green onions at an angle into inch long pieces. We'll cut one ounce of ginger into small pieces like so. We'll smash two cloves of garlic, then peel and mince them. With our veggies prepared, my dad will show us how to create a simple, delicious sauce you can throw on any stir fry. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step by step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. After soaking the peas for 5 to 10 minutes, we'll remove it from the water. We'll add 8 to 10 ounces of piping hot water to our wok. We'll add about a teaspoon of oil here. In our video on preparing Chinese broccoli, my dad explains why adding salt and oil to the water is so important. It also applies here and to other veggie stir fries. When the water boils, we'll add our celery and carrot. After 30 to 40 seconds of blanching the celery and carrots on high, we'll add the snow peas. What can you use instead of the celery and carrots? After another 30 seconds, we'll turn the heat off and drain our veggies. Now that our veggies are blanched, I also wanted to make a special shout out to thank all of our wonderful Patreon supporters for helping bring this video to life. If you enjoy our videos and are interested in supporting us directly, head on over to patreon.com slash madewithlao to learn more. Now we'll prep the same wok for stir frying. We'll heat the wok on high for 40 to 50 seconds, then add our oil. Swirl it around and let it heat up for 15 to 20 seconds, then add the shrimp. Make sure to move the shrimp around so that it cooks evenly on both sides. How do you not overcook the shrimp? After about 40 to 50 seconds, or when the shrimp have turned mostly white, we'll take them out of the wok. Okay. After cooking the aromatics for 15 seconds, we'll add our veggies. Mm. 
After a quick toss, we'll add in the shrimp as well. Okay, hot. We'll add a teaspoon of cooking wine. Yeah, other question, what can I use instead of shrimp? Don't die, Gida. Gaya, that's not a good one. Hold on, let the die, don't ha, that's right. Yo, you don't die. Yo, you don't. After 30 to 40 seconds of stir frying with the shrimp, we'll add our sauce. We'll give it a couple tosses to mix in the sauce, then turn off the heat. They might not yell, turn for a year. We'll add a teaspoon of sesame oil here. Okay. A few quick tosses here and we're ready to plate. To summarize, here's a three-step cooking process you can apply to other combos of meats and veggies. One, blanch the vegetables in boiling water with some oil, then drain. Two, cook the meat until it's about 80 to 90% done, then set it aside. Three, cook and add everything back in stages. First, the aromatics, then the veggies, then the meat, then the sauce. This isn't the only way to stir fry, but hopefully it's a helpful framework you can use. Now let's see if Cam Cam approves of the dish. How do I? Look like here, follow! It's yummy. Yummy! Hello, everyone. Lantau Chow Ha Chow Chi Yen Chow La. Hey, Mong Tai Ka Chong Yi. Cheers! Cheers! Ha ha. YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right.